Uh, yesterday we learned in the Devar Malchut that <clears throat> every Jew has to be like a flame that goes up on its own. And this we, uh, was accomplished first time <clears throat> by Aaron at this week's Torah portion, <clears throat> that Aaron lit the lamps and the menorah in the Holy Temple. And this lamp refers to the Jewish people. The seven lamps of the menorah, seven. And Aaron lit them. What does it mean that he inspired and activated the Jewish souls, the Jews? <clears throat> and he made it to the, to the, to the, the, the goal was that the flames of these lamps right in the menorah would go up and they would be independent. They would go up on their own. <clears throat> when he would put the match or whatever he had to, the, to the, the, the wick and he wouldn't remove it until it was independent. The flame went up on its own. Says the Rebbe, this is very relevant to us today. That a Jew first, and again, let's just remind, repeat again, that the Jews are here to teach the whole world to recognize and to act properly and think properly and speak properly, and feel properly <clears throat> in the presence of God. And where is the presence of God? Everywhere. Everywhere. Like it says in the, in the Ten Commandments. God says in the Ten Commandments, the second of the Ten Commandments, you should have no other gods in my presence. Al Panai. Or you can translate before me. It says, what does that mean before me in my presence? It means everywhere. Everywhere is before God. Everywhere is God's presence. So it's the same thing also. A Jew has to, everywhere, all the time, have this flame going up on its own. So the Rebbe said that this, we can apply, what does this mean? You know, it's very, very nice to say, what does it mean? It says we can apply this to a person's self, a person, how he, a Jew, how he does the Torah and the commandments, and how he acts in the world day to day. It says, let's go. <clears throat> Even though that on its own, the body, the human body, right, of a Jew, it doesn't shine up with that, the light of the, the lamp of the commandments and the, the light of the Torah, and that everything he does will be for the sake of heaven. It doesn't come automatically. Ma'avdim at the goof. A person can accustom and work on his body, and he can train it. But often show regal nasa tevasheni that it becomes his nature that he'll do Torah and the commandments, what we call automatically. Automatically. Why does he do it? I'm a Jew. Wakes up in the morning, but this still is a, a secondary thing to the person because he on his own he himself naturally wasn't part of this service of God he didn't do it naturally what's the proof he had to train himself but just that by means of training himself so it becomes like second nature second nature Let's go back again, talking like a soldier, right? A soldier. A normal person is not a soldier. Most people. World War II, especially, they took people, normal people. They, they drafted everybody into the army. 
And they took him, they sent him for training several months, and they had to learn how to be killers. They taught people how to be killers. And in normal day society, you have to teach people how not to be killers. You have to teach people how to, to, to if there's any trouble, you know, call the police or something like that. Don't jump in, don't start shooting, don't. But they trained the person so because after the war, what happened is people had to go back to their real true nature, their family. Same thing as with Torah and the commandments. Torah and the commandments, a person can be trained. You can train yourself, but it still is a second nature. <clears throat> but by means of this, that a Jew thinks and he contemplates that really the fact is that even his physical body is connected to God. It's not a separate thing. It's not just my soul, I'm a Jew, my soul, but my body is like everybody else. No, the fact is a Jewish body is also different. Like it's known, a metziut emitit yesha nivra. Not only that, the fact of the matter is the whole world is. The true existence of the physical creation is really the creator. Then <clears throat> when you start when you do Torah and the commandments, it's not like a separate thing. It's not like I'm religious and I have a, instead of having a little kippah, now I have a big kippah on my head, a big yarmulke on my head. And a more religious person. Because what happens is that a person suddenly realizes that my true being, my true existence is really to do what God wants. That's my true existence. That's the number one existence. Because my true existence is connected to Yesha Miti, to God's true existence. And by God, there's no difference between the first time and the second time. Everything is brand new all the time. So if so, that's the idea of a flame going up on its own regarding to your physical body. That at first you, you can inspire yourself to be a religious Jew, but still it's not really me. It's just I put on tzitzit and I put on tefillin and I put, but the true me is sort of still, you know, fishing around, you know, for something interesting or for something, you know, how I can also in the religious world, there's also good food. There's also, you know, the, the things you really like, right? Also religious people can also really get real pleasure from the world. You can have a nice car, you can dress nice and everything. But what do you really want? You really want the world. But you're also religious. So as the Rebbe, a person can teach himself, if you want to call it, train himself to realize that this is, it's not just a, a, not a religious way. This is false. The fact of the matter is that God is really creating us. The world belongs to God and I belong to God. All of my being is just a big miracle. It's a big gift. When a person realizes this, then he realizes that doing Torah and the commandments, this is not an additional thing to my personality. Exactly the opposite. My personality is one with God. And extra things, you want a nice piece of cake, or you want a nice car, or you want the things that other people, that's their main thing in their life. That by me is an extra thing. Right? An extra thing. Why not have a nice piece of cake? What's wrong with that? It's kosher. Have a nice car. Wonder Why not? Right, a nice Ford, a nice Corvette, a Lamborghini, whatever you want. But that's not the main thing. The main thing is serving God. If a Lamborghini will help me somehow or other to serve God, and I'm not fooling myself, a <clears throat> very basic thing, not fooling yourself, then okay, why not Lamborghini? Why not? What's the problem? But those are the things that are additional. The main thing in the person's life is the creator. I'm being created. I'm just a creation. And he realizes that every second is brand new. The Yeshlomo, we can say that this is, first of all, a person in the beginning of his service of God. He has to serve in a way that he, he, he accustoms himself, trains himself. And by means of this, that he becomes more and more refined, then the, the, the power of God's essence is revealed in the body of a Jew. Like I said before, that's supposed to be the idea of the land of Israel. The land of Israel is supposed to be a holy land. It's supposed to show everyone that holiness is not an additional thing to the land. Holy is first. Holy is first. Even though in Hebrew we don't say it that way, we say Eretz HaKodesh. But <clears throat> the main thing is that 
The Holy is where God is, he's the creator. There's nothing except for God. That's all there is. All there is is God. God does not don't manifest himself like, you know, he's a big white light or something. God manifests himself. How does he manifest himself? God, people, planets, world, commandments. God manifests himself. But to realize that it's God that's doing it and not to think that God is also, you know, big tree or something like that. That's idolatry, a person. The fact is God is creating everything. There's nothing except for God. But what? But God is creating everything so we'll use it properly. And that's what it means that our, we unite the world with God. The world becomes holy. Starting off with the holy temple and the holy world and the holy land, I'm sorry, the holy land and the holy Torah. Right? That's why the, the, the whole present state of the land of Israel is really in the wrong direction. But you can't deny the fact that it's holy. And you can't deny the fact that every single Jew is holy. And you can't deny the fact that the Torah is holy. And it will be built the holy temple. Even though you can pretend to deny it, you can, it's like a person denying that he's a human being. He thinks he's a dog. Right? So if the person, at the person like that, they'll put him into a mental institution, but a mental institution for people, not for dogs. Because the fact is, is he's a person. The fact is the land of Israel is holy. The fact is the Jewish people are holy. That's the fact. We just have to accustom ourselves to this fact. That's what it means. The flame goes up on its own. That's its true identity. Our enthusiasm for God is not an additional thing for us. That becomes our essence because that's the fact. God is really creating us. All there, similarly, just like it is in the service of a man to God, also will be also how a person reacts to the world by means of that to the Jew does a commandment with a physical thing in the world, that most of the commandments are physical things, by means of this, that refines the physical world. Until, in some instances, the thing becomes a holy thing. Right? Like I just said, the land of Israel becomes a holy land. Holy means infinitely, infinitely, infinitely precious and alive. More than all the money in the world, more than Hagam, even though Shekadusha, Hefza, Nasit, Ayadid, Adam, even though the person makes this thing holy, right? You have a pair of tefillin. A person has to slaughter the animal. You don't have to, it could be for an animal died on its own. But the, 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 the person has to take the skin of the animal and work on it and tan the hide and write the, the, the things and form the tefillin. A person has to do something to make it holy by means of a person that does the commandment. But afterwards, the holiness becomes imbued in this item. But often Shagam Akhrezman, that even after a, a time that you do the commandment and you make this thing holy, the holiness remains, the tefillin remain holy, the, the, the Sefer Torah remains holy on its own, even if there's nobody reading it. Right, if you happen to find an, under the ruins or whatever, a safer Torah that's intact, I, uh, and, and nobody has used it. It's still holy. Here, that we have the Mashiach is going to come and he's going to find the the ark, or he's going to actually just bring it up from underneath the holy temple, where it's hidden now, and he's going to bring it up. The, the, the safer Torah has not been read for two thousand years, right? Two thousand years, more than that. What are we talking about? Two thousand years, two thousand five hundred years from the, the, the second temple. Before the second temple was destroyed, it was hidden down there. When they take it out and read it, it's going to be holy, even though it hasn't been read for, you know, 2,500 years. Because it's, if it's read, the, as soon as the Sefer Torah is made, it's holy. Human being makes it. And even more, <clears throat> that there isn't the, the power of this physical thing. Let's take the example of the Sefer Torah, the tefillin, the What a person does with it, that a person can make an oath. The law is, it, it, it's, it's in American courts. I hope they still do it in American courts. They used to swear a person in on the Bible. Nowadays, they don't do it anymore. I don't know. I, I, maybe, I think a person has his, 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 his uh, option. See, I'm not going to swear on the Bible. Anyway, where do they get this idea of swearing you in on the Bible? Right? I swear I will say the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Where did they get this idea? 
because this is from Judaism. Judaism, when a person takes an oath, the oath is supposed to be on a holy item, on a Sefer Torah, on a, that's what it's supposed to be. The fact is, I don't even know if they do that in, in Israeli courts. I don't know if they make an oath. You swear, swear a person into this. I don't know. Anyway, that when a person, according to the laws of oaths, a person is supposed to say something that's holy if you make an oath. And nowadays, you're, we're discouraged from making oaths, especially in the name of God. Because if you don't keep it, it says it's a very severe thing. So the oath has to be made on a holy item. That's why it says in the, the Abraham, when he made his servant Eliezer swear that he would be faithful in finding a wife for Yitzchak. So Abraham said, I want to make you swear on a holy object. What's a holy object? There was only one holy object in the whole world in the time of Abraham. This is way before Torah, 400 years what before the Torah was given. There was only one holy physical thing in the world, and that was Abraham's circumcision. That's right. He said, I want you to swear by my circumcision. That was the only holy physical thing that was in the world. It says, by means of this physical thing of holiness is caused, a person can take an oath on this physical thing. The thing itself, an item, a physical item, becomes holy. This item, right, the tefillin or the Sefer Torah, nowadays people don't swear on a circumcision. They have other things. <clears throat> that this item becomes imbued, permeated with holiness. It becomes holy itself. Also the oath, the shavua. When a person takes an oath, oath also, okay, let's, uh, so the whole, the, the item becomes holy on its own. Just like, here the Rebbe says also, you take an oath on a physical item that was made holy. Says why? Because a holy thing gives you power. Shavua, an oath, also comes from the language of sova to be satisfied. Muzba bikochos, that it, by means of making an oath to God, you become satisfied. I, again, I want to stress again that we do not make oaths today. You say bli neder, without an oath. But nevertheless, the ideal thing of the oath. It says our life begins with an oath. That before this child, that's how the book of Tanya begins. Before the child comes into the world, as God makes him take an oath. And this oath shows that the power of holiness, this is the child before he comes into the physical world. So he swears on the physical world because it's holy. The physical world is our job is to make it holy. Okay. <clears throat> Just like this is relevant to a holy item. For instance, the sacrifices. Shagam, Shokadush is a korban. A person takes an animal, a sheep. Which a sheep is a, a sheep. It's an animal. It's not holy. And a person says, this sheep I'm going to bring to the holy temple. The holy temple becomes, the, the, the sheep becomes holy. Even though it's a person that makes it holy. Hariya Korban mit Kadesh, the sacrifice becomes holy in its very body. The actual animal becomes holy. Just by a person saying, this sheep I'm going to bring to the holy temple, the sheep becomes holy. And the holiness doesn't go away. Hakadushi Nisharet, that the holiness remains there in a way that's me'aleha, automatic. Like we say, the flame has to go automatically. So here we see that a person has to make himself into a flame that goes up automatically. He connects himself to the creator 
and it inspires him automatically, constantly. And also he can do the same thing to the world. The world becomes holy and it becomes holy automatically, constantly. Just like the sacrifices did. And that's the whole, supposed to, like I said, the idea of the land of Israel. It's supposed to be holy on its own. We can say, the novelty is, know that the physical element of the world on its own, it's not connected to holiness, the physical world. Right? The Eiffel Tower is holy. But in order to make it holy, the sheep that we're taking to the holy temple, it's holy. No. In order to make it holy, in a way that it becomes holy and becomes an item of holiness, that you have to have the power of God. That God unites all opposites. And this power was given when God gave the Torah. Let's say I want to make the Eiffel Tower holy. Can I do it? No. Why not? Because you have to go according to the Torah. The Torah tells us what we can imbue with holiness and what we can't. Let's say I want nowadays to make a sheep holy. I'm going to bring this to the holy temple. Is it holy? No, because there's no holy temple. But if you take a pair of tefillin and you make the pair of tefillin for a commandment, that makes it holy. You went according to the Torah. If so, God gives the power, gives the power to a Jew that by means of doing a commandment with a physical thing, then that physical thing itself becomes holy. In fact, it becomes holy on its own, even when you're not doing the commandment with it. It doesn't, you don't need power from above. So that's the whole idea of the holy land. What you're going to tell me, I'm going to make the whole Israel holy. Tel Aviv is going to be holy. I can't do that. That's ridiculous. What's the answer? You're right. You can't do it. But with God, you can do anything. And God says that it's a holy land. We just have to do a little something to reveal that holiness. And then the holiness will be the fact. That's the fact of business. Something like we said, the candles that were the, the lamps that were in the holy temple. You have to have a person, he lights the lamp. And they, because there are, there are wicks, there's physical wicks, there's physical oil on their own, they can't light themselves. But after a person lights them, then the flame goes up on its own. And that's supposed to be relevant to the whole entire world. Says the Rebbe, similar it is also in mundane things, in your Harishus, your business that you're in, the house you live in, the clothes that you wear, the money that you make, all of your deeds of a Jew are supposed to be done for the sake of heaven. And even more, they're supposed to be done with the knowledge of God, connected to God. That not only that, the things are for the sake of heaven. <clears throat> Just like, for instance, a person that eats food in order that he'll have power to learn Torah and do the commandments. But the food itself is not holy in this case. But also you can make The world itself, holy. That all of your ways, everything that you do becomes connected with God, the creator. And the world itself becomes holy and it doesn't need a Jew to renew that holiness. But what? A physical thing on its own becomes holy on its own. Right? You, you see this a lot of times they have, uh, you know, antiques. We had once a, a, a pupil who learned in the yeshiva, he was an expert in antiques. And, um, you know, it was a big, a big market. If you can find, let's say, you know, a guitar, a guitar, a guitar from 1960, you know, uh, oh, it's a, a, a nice guitar. Uh, you can use the, the guitar. It could cost a regular guitar like that, cost $2,000. It's a genuine 1960, you know, whatever it is, uh, you know, Fender or something like that. It cost $10,000. If this guitar was owned by, you know, Plony Almoni, the big rock star, super rock star, I don't believe it. You've got the papers to prove it. Could go for a million dollars. A million dollars. Just because he touched it. This guy touched it. All of a sudden, the value goes up. Well, the same thing, <clears throat> Lahavdil. 
is when a Jew uses something for the sake of God. Just the fact of the matter <clears throat> that a Jew used something for the sake of God. Now, God is greater than this Poloni Almoni guitar rock player, whatever it is. He's a Jew. A God, God is much greater. When a Jew uses something for God, then that thing becomes infinitely precious and valuable. That's what's called holy. The thing becomes holy forever. That's what it means. The flame goes up on its own. Like we understand even by a child, like we said before, that a shalevet olah may allow that the flame goes up on its own. This is to all the Jewish people, even young children. When a person puts in his house, his room, a child puts in his room a holy book, a chumash, Torah, a siddur, a prayer book, a charity box, so tzurichim likvoa azot b'makom, and it has to be in a place where after it's set, that it's permanent. It's permanent. You don't. The child doesn't need to keep setting it and renewing it all the time. I feel a low, the yellow. The child doesn't have to every day nail it to the wall. The child remembers that. But I'm sorry. It has to be set in the child's room in such a way, the chumash itself, so that the room itself goes up on its own. The, it reminds automatically, every time he looks at it, the, the, this, this chumash, the, 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 what is it, the, the Torah book, or the siddur, the prayer book, and similarly the charity box, it'll be resting in a place where it immediately arouses the child to know that he's special, he should, he's a Jew, he should give charity. And this applies to everyone. Charity is a wonderful thing. You know, the Rebbe used to stand hours on Sundays, and he would give out dollars to people. And he would give out the dollars to the people, and it was like on the condition that they would give this money to charity, or they would exchange it and give money to the charity, to encourage people to give charity. So the Rebbe is saying, therefore, there should be a charity box in every house, every room, and everyone, every day, to encourage a child to give charity. Similarly, also educating children. In other words, what's the Rebbe saying? A flame should go up, it should be warm, should be excited, but it should be from the person himself. Allah has come, how much more so if they actually do a really commandment. That this should be in a way that the physical world becomes holy. It goes up on its own. That it reminds a whole a Jew all the time uh, that he has to be serving God. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the original subject that we had, which is I think we're going to have to do this next week. Maybe we'll see. Maybe we'll do it tomorrow, Friday. Um, I'm going to be here. Too. Um, what was it? Why in this week's Torah portion? is the Torah divided into seven books, according to some opinions. And how can it be that if you divide it up into seven books, then the sixth book, in other words, you divide this Torah portion, Baalotcha, into three, so it ends up that the first portion of this Torah, this chapter, is the end of the previous book. It's it, it's 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 a book in itself. Two sentences in the middle are a book in itself. And the last part of it is a book in itself, the book of, of, of numbers itself. So it, it, if you do it that way, then it starts off with a bad thing. The Jewish people were complaining. This begins what's called the sixth book of the Torah, right? If you divide the book of numbers into three books, so it ends up the, the third of these books starts off with this how the people were complaining to God. So how can you start a book like that? So the Rebbe says, the whole point of this book, this chapter, Balot Chatanerot, raising up the candles, this is that the service of a Jew has to be in a way that it illuminates himself and everything around him. And to the degree in the whole entire world, like we said, a little bit of light pushes away a lot of darkness. That's what we said. Balot chata nerot. 
You have to illuminate yourself, your the, the people around you, <clears throat> add something positive, even the whole world. And it has to be such a way that it's automatic inside of you. This is the real true identity of every single Jew, even the physical body of a Jew, that on its own, it is a vessel for the light of the soul, near mitzvah Torah or by means of the commandments. So now we can understand that this idea of what a Jew is supposed to do, that he's supposed to permeate the whole entire, first of all, his whole entire being, and every detail of the world that he comes in contact with, this is so important that even the lowest aspects of his life, even the lowest aspects of creation, a Jew has an obligation to elevate. In fact, that's really the Evan Abokhan, that's really the, the sign if he's really embodied and, as you say, internalized this message that I'm a Jew, I have to connect myself to the Creator and connect the surrounding to the Creator and to connect the whole world to the Creator. Now, the whole world is a pretty nasty place. Says the Rebbe, that's exactly our job. That's the test to see. Have we really, truly imbued ourselves with this amazing message that we are creators, that we are, can I say that we are connected to the creator in order to make the world a good, positive, healthy, blessed place? Namely, not only that God can do it, but that we can do it. So it has to be in every single detail of this physical world. That it also should shine on its own. Even more, by means of the lowest things shining on their own, this shows on raising things up. Like it's, it's a known thing. If you look, for instance, you want to lift up a building, so you put the jack or a cow, or you put it under the lowest place of the building. And then you can lift it up. So now, according to this, we can understand how this third book of the book of Numbers can start off with such a bad thing. As the people were complaining that that's the whole thing of our own lighting up the lights. Our own had love for every single Jew, even the furthest away from Torah and the commandments. It says, Oh, have the briot, Abraham, that we learned in Pirkei Avot. You have to love, we will learn, love the creations that our own loved every Jew, even if the only thing good you could say about him is that God creates him. Our own would bring these people. That's the whole idea of our own and what our own wants to inspire in us also. That we have to elevate and illuminate the whole entire world, even the complainers, even the lowest of the low. Those people are complaining about absolutely nothing. That those people also should be inspired to have a connection, a love. And uh, and uh, uh, I say to be in harmony with the creator of the universe, even the lowest people, these complainers. That starts a whole new book, a whole new idea, power in Judaism. It's in the Torah. So that's why the third book of this book of Numbers could start off on a bad note because it's telling us that even the lowest things in the world we have the power not just to elevate them from the outside, but to inspire them from the inside that they too should be a flame that goes up on its own. As God willing, I hope we'll talk about tomorrow. This is a very long sicha, but it's very beautiful also. I don't know how much of this we'll get to tomorrow. Okay, we'll see, At least we, we got up to this. Well, God willing, tomorrow. But today we'll learn at 3 o'clock, we'll learn the Haftorah.
Here's the yom yom for today. The Alter Rebbe, the first Rebbe of Chabad, that's the one who wrote the Tanya, where we're learning the Mimer in the morning, his Mimer in Torah, in Lechuti Torah. He said like this, the Jewish people are called lamps. A lamp, every Jew also is a lamp. A lamp is a vessel, a wick, and oil. And, of course, a flame. But you have to light the flame. That you have to do on your own. Then it sheds light. He said to this person, you have a good lamp. You're in, in, intelligent. You have a nice personality. But you, lack the, you have to light yourself. How do you light yourself? Str strike the soul the stone of the animal soul, like a flint stone, you strike it, what's called your animal soul, then a spark of fire flies out. This, this bitterness that we talked about before in the mimer in the morning, then a spark of fire flies out and kindles the godly fire. So from your body, from your physical activities, from your physical world, by controlling yourself a little bit, by forcing yourself to do what's right, is that and you say defiance is like striking a stone and brings out a spark that kindles the godly soul. Have a good day with Mashiach. Now, God willing, at three o'clock, we'll learn Chumash. Today, we'll learn the Haftor. It's an amazing Haftor from Zechariah, the prophet Zechariah, one of the last prophets.